Good day everybody. Today I'm going to demonstrate how I cover most of my EPP aircraft in Kevlar. It's a soft, flexible covering that's extremely durable. Uh, it's very lightweight. It's appropriate for anything with a wingspan of about 30 to 40 inches and up. I generally use 1.7 ounce cloth. It's a good trade-off between uh, weight and durability. So I'll show you how I do it. I'll show you the materials I use, the weights that I use, how to mix them, and yeah, let's get into it. Quick edit. I want to clarify a little bit more why I use Kevlar over other commonly used materials in the FPV drone world, um, such as carbon fiber, fiberglass, or laminate. Even though Kevlar is more expensive, it's a really good match for EPP uh, due to the flexibility and durability. These things are really hard to break. Uh, about the only failure mode for these things is uh, breaking the spar. So as long as you don't break the spar, uh, this drone's gonna be around forever. Uh, why would I use Kevlar instead of laminate? Laminate is a little bit heavier for the same strength and it's not nearly as tear, puncture, abrasion resistant as the Kevlar is. Um, but it's, it's a great material. Uh, why don't I use fiberglass? Same thing as laminate. It's uh, definitely not as tear, puncture, abrasion resistant as the Kevlar is. And carbon fiber, uh, you can't bend the fibers as far without them uh, breaking. And also it's not RF transparent. So even though the Kevlar is relatively expensive um, and it's not the easiest to apply, that is why I use that material over the others. All right, and that's the end of that edit. I'm back to the video. All right, guys, so you can see here are the materials that I use for the most part to apply the Kevlar and also to prepare the EPP, the hot wire EPP, for accepting the Kevlar. You can kind of see there's a lot of imperfections in the surface of the hot wire cut EPP. It's not like a molded surface, so we need to smooth that out a little bit before we apply the Kevlar, especially as you can see here, obviously, in areas where I uh, put in the spar. Lots of roughness. Um, won't accept Kevlar easily unless we prepare it. I'll demonstrate what these are for later, obviously, but you can use xylene to thin the goop. Uh, you can also use propyl acetate or you could use toluene. Toluene is probably the best, uh, but it might not be available depending on where you live. So these two mixed together uh, is used in the actual Kevlar application. And these two mixed together with lightweight spackle are great for preparing the hot wire cut EPP surface. Okay, so I'll show you how I mix those together and use them. Okay guys, so I just finished mixing the goop with the xylene. Always use a respirator when using these chemicals. Uh, they can be toxic if exposed to for long periods of time. So definitely take advantage of that. Uh, this is about 40% goop by weight to 60% solvent. You can see it's a very thin, runny, honey consistency. And that's what I'm going to use to apply the Kevlar to the prepared foam. To prepare the foam, I'm actually just going to use that mixture and add this lightweight spackling to give a material that will fill in all these divots and voids and is also still sandable. So I will uh, mix that, give you the final weight on that, and then I will show you how I apply and finish the foam to accept the Kevlar. All right guys, so here you can see the final mixture. You can kind of get an idea of its consistency. This is a 24 ounce canning jar. You can see with the spackle that fills most of it, that was using one tube of goop uh, mixed with the xylene and then the appropriate weight of spackle. So it comes out that the, by weight, the spackle, even though it's most of the volume, is about 45% of the weight. And the rest is the uh, goop and toluene mixture. So that's what I'll be using to prepare the foam with, and I'll show you that in a second. All right, guys, so I'm going to show you on this wing how I apply the, uh, now that we have a lightweight, flexible fill filler material, uh, I'm going to show you how I apply that to this wing. This wing is actually perfect. It's about as complex as it gets. It's got a GPS embedded in it. So there's cutouts for wires, it's got the spar in the middle of it, and I used Gorilla Glue for that, so there's a lot of voids in it that need to be filled. So I'll be showing you that. I'm gonna put on my respirator, so I won't be talking while I'm doing this, but I'll just do like a time lapse or something so you guys can kind of see uh, what's going on. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it, and I'll get on it. Alright, 
right, so you can see I threw some weights on there at the end just to make sure I don't introduce any warpage as the material, as the filler cures. Um, yeah, so we will do that process two or three times total on each surface. Uh, the filler will contract a little bit because of the, the solvent evaporating and the goop curing. So it will contract a little bit. You'll have some little imperfections left over, and so that's why we do extra layers. Uh, sand in between each layer, uh, but I'll show you guys um, as we go, and then I'll show you the final uh, surface before we apply the Kevlar. All right, so it's been an hour or two. Uh, I let the top flash, so now it's dry enough that I can flip it over and do the bottom side. You'll see that I made room in the top bed for the, uh, the electronics that are embedded in the wing already. So that'll just give them space so that I can lay this flat. And yeah, we get starting. All right, guys. So it's been a couple of hours. I've got my sanding block here, so I'm just gonna sand this bottom, sand it, flip it, sand it on top. Um, and then we'll see if we need to do it one more time before we Kevlar it. Alright guys, so this is a wing tip. You can see I applied a piece of Kevlar with a 3M90 before actually covering the rest of the wing with Kevlar and I apply it right where the leading edge starts to curve into the wing tip, okay? Um, and you'll see why that is important in a minute. Alright guys, so here you can see why I added this piece of Kevlar in here. Right where the wing starts to curve, you need to split the fabric so that you can wrap the edge uh, c cleanly uh, with the Kevlar. So you need that doubler right there so that there's no exposed foam uh, after you make this cut. Also I added some 3M90 along the leading edge here and onto the fabric so that when I go from the bottom and wrap it around over to the top you can wrap it cleanly and have it positioned before you add the goop mixture. Alright guys so you can kinda get an idea of what the surface looks like after two or three layers of the spackle goop mixture kind of fills in all the voids it's not perfect it's not like a um, EPS you know hot wired surface yet it's not it's not like a molded surface but it's good enough that it'll level out the Kevlar when you apply the Kevlar we've done about three layers on this particular wing so the next step is the Kevlar does not bond really well to the balsa trailing edge so I have found that I need to put down a layer of goop, thinned goop, the thin goop mixture. Let that dry and then I'll show you how I finish that off. All right, so I'll let that dry for about a half an hour and then we'll get started on the Kepler application. Alright everybody, the wing is ready to cover. You can see I cut out a piece of Kevlar and I cut it on the bias so that the fibers are running 45 degrees uh, relative to the spar and that's gonna what's going to give the wing its tor torsional stiffness. Uh, you have to use special Kevlar scissors. You can see the serrations along the edge and that's what allows you to cut the Kevlar cleanly. Don't mind the color on this, I got a little paint in there as I was doing a repair on another plane, but that should be clear. And here I have an iron, a covering iron set to 180 degrees so that it does not melt the foam. You won't want to use this iron for covering regular planes after you use it to apply Kevlar. Okay, um, if I didn't use the iron, if I just applied the goop mixture, uh, the Kevlar could lift as it's drying. So, the iron is what I use to bond the Kevlar to the wing quickly. Okay, and here we go.
right, so maybe you guys could see how the um, the goop mixture was beating up and coming off with the iron. Um, that's really good. It saves you a lot of weight. It gets most of gets rid of most of the of the goop mixture uh, while still leaving a great bond. You'll see here along the trailing edge, along the wooden part, it just does not stick well. Um, and I haven't been able to figure out why that is. So the solution to that is thin CA. And I'm just using my finger because I don't particularly care if I get super glue on my fingers, but if you guys want to do something else, wear a glove, use um, some plastic wrap over your finger, uh, anything to protect your finger if you want. But here I'm just rubbing it in through the fabric and letting it evaporate. I keep rubbing it until it's fully evaporated. Keep your finger moving or the plastic over your finger moving so that it does not stick to the super glue. Make sure you get the super glue all the way up to the edge of the balsa because you're going to put your spar, uh, your not your spar, your elevon cutout or your aileron cutout close to the foam. It'll still be in balsa, but it'll be close to the foam and you're going to use the Kevlar as your hinge. So the Kevlar needs to be bonded on both sides of that hinge line. And one of the great things about the super glue is it's going to give you a really hard, really thin, really robust trailing edge that's going to be very hard to damage. Um, so you can do you can do razor thin trailing edges with this method. You don't have to leave it proud a millimeter or two to wrap like if you were using laminate you don't have to wrap the laminate around the trailing edge you just well you'll see how I do it but it'll be a razor thin trailing edge and there you can see it's stuck very firmly to the balsa now now I'm gonna apply some 3m90 right along the seam here to help when I wrap it over the top so that I can position the fabric before I apply the goop and you can actually spray the whole wing very lightly if you want and then put the fabric over. You could do it on both sides. Put the fabric on there and get it all smoothed out, no wrinkles or anything like that if you want. Sometimes I do it that way, sometimes I don't. Um, can't tell you why I do it or don't do it sometimes, uh, but it works either way. All right, so this is the top of the wing. You can see I made some room in the Kevlar for the electronics. This is where the body is gonna go, so we don't really need the Kevlar to span the whole thing as there will be Kevlar covering the body and the, the Kevlar will essentially be continuous even though there is this cutout here. Alright guys, so now we're just going to truncate this trailing edge, uh, cut off the excess Kevlar. I'm going to cut off the Kevlar about yeah, 1 16th, uh, a little bit more. Um, so there's a little bit of, uh, so the Kevlar is bonding to the Kevlar that came from the other side. And there you can see the nice knife edge trailing edge. Right, so if you guys want to take the finish to the next level, which I I recommend on anything over about 40 inches. Um, anything less, I don't generally do it just because of the weight consideration. But anything over that, I add a 0.75 ounce fiberglass cloth to kind of fill in the pinholes of the weave of the Kevlar. The aerodynamic benefits of doing this uh, generally outweigh the minor amount of added weight. And I'm not going to use the iron to get rid of any excess goop mixture. I'm just going to use this uh, playing card to squeegee out as much as I can and leave a perfectly smooth surface. So let's get on it.
All right guys, so the final step is gonna to be to get rid of any of this excess uh, fiberglass. So I'm just gonna clean that up with uh, 120 grit sandpaper. Then at that point you'll be done. Another thing that I forgot to mention about the fiberglass is it is sandable, whereas the Kevlar is not. So if you have any surface imperfections or anything that you want to uh, smooth out a little bit, you can do that when you have the fiberglass on, but you can't really do that when you don't have the fiberglass on. So that's another benefit other than just giving it a smoother finish in general. Alright guys, so that's pretty much a completed wing section. Um, yeah, you can paint it with, you know, anything that you want. I use Krylon spray on paint, spray, spray can paint, or Design Masters. Those both give a really light finish. They're not heavy paints and they cover well. So you do have to use, you know, less paint. But yeah, that's it. Okay guys, I totally lied. We are not quite done. I realized I should also show you how to make a live hinge. Um, on wings that are covered with Kevlar. Obviously the trailing third to quarter of the wing is in balsa. So I'm going to need a little bit of a balsa spar on the rear of the foam portion of the wing. And then I'm going to place the hinge. And then of course you'll have the live surface. Okay. So on this particular wing, um, the hinge is only about one eighth of an inch wide. You'll probably want about a quarter of an inch width worth of balsa spar on the rear of the wing and so I'm going to cut on the front line I'm going to cut straight down with the exacto and then on the rear cut I'm actually going to cut it in at an angle so that it forms a v-shaped cutout all right and then the the hinge will just be a hairline of Kevlar So if you have any questions, let me know, and I hope this is beneficial to you. If you want to give it a shot, have a good one.